and I believe we are live. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of Crystal Coaching Connections. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, so if you guys don't already know, this is a podcast where we spend some time every week discussing health, wellness, and everything in be between. The goal of the show is to really bring together uh, wellness as an integrative practice, uh, fully exploring it like a wheel uh, with all the spokes up in there to create alignment, uh, alignment and oneness. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Crystal Baran. I am an integrative health and wellness coach, and I'm also a certified natural therapist. I specialize in working with men and women, navigate and overcome stress and burnout naturally to reclaim their confidence and essentially stress less. Um, today, I have these beautiful ladies with me. Uh, I have Alana and Elena of, of Embody Apothecary. I'm going to say it with the British accent. Um, and these ladies are the genius behind a local all-natural skincare line uh, that harnesses the power of plants. Uh, they believe in nature um, and sustainability, which essentially is the driving force behind the creation of these amazing products uh, that come from our earth. So welcome, Alana. Alana and Elena, uh, please go ahead and introduce yourselves and make sure you guys get your names like <laughs> so people know who each one of you are. <laughs> you like signs over. Yeah, head. exactly, right over your head. <laughs> um, so I'm Helena. Uh, yep, I'm Alana. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you guys. So tell us a little bit about your backgrounds. Um, so uh, my background is, uh, I guess technically uh, in geography. I went to school and I studied that. I grew up in a rural setting. Okay. I always had a very deep interest in agriculture and sustainability and the environment and sort of the human dimensions of that and how we all come together and interact with our environments. Um, yeah, and we met up in Gale, so that was fun. Yeah, so that's my background. Cool. Yeah, my background is um, mainly in nutrition. I guess what kind of influences my um, my contribution to Embody is mainly kind of stemming from my background in nutrition. That was initially what I had formally studied. Yep. Um, and then I became more interested in holistic health after studying nutrition, and I saw the really the importance of looking at health from a more global perspective. And I've always really liked like making things, <laughs> making skincare products. Like I started making body butters like a really long time ago and like gave them as gifts for people. And then as I as my love of, of plants kept growing and I, you know, started to become way more interested in the power of plants and what they can offer our bodies and our minds and our souls and mm -hmm. and yeah that's how kind of and then yeah as Helena said we met at McGill and we both had this similar like love of nature and kind of passion for sustainability mm -hmm. and that's Embody was born. Yes. I I, I love it. I, I love how both of your backgrounds complement each other and I love how um, I, I, how you guys created something that has so much meaning behind it. And I'm, I've been talking about how I'm going to geek out all day today, like just having this call, because I'm like a sucker for all natural, you know, I'm like the, I guess they want to, you know, my family calls me the granola girl, you know, like I'm the only, I'm the one that started paving the way in my family by doing things naturally. Right. But mm -hmm. I found it very difficult in my last 10 years to really get on that bandwagon and finding products that are not full of chemicals and added and fragrances and stuff like that because even the stuff that is all natural uh you still really have to be careful um you know because there the regulations around certain things um are, are not very clear cut uh whether it's here or in the in the united states or wherever it is so um i want to talk a little bit about you know why skincare why healthy sustainable natural skincare what is it about that that's the most important to you Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a really interesting way to, I mean, like a simple way of describing what we do is we take plants and we transform them into products that work with your skin. Yeah. Okay. Take good. Those medicinal powers from the plant and we transform them into something that is, that you can put on your skin and work into your 
like daily routine of caring for yourself. Yeah. Um, like embody is, is so much more than just like skincare and what we put on our skin, but it's, it's more a way to inspire people how to care for themselves mm -hmm. and how to really like live on a daily basis, you know, bringing in those micro moments of like stillness and presence, like whether it's through exactly. your skincare routine or whether it's like going out for a walk and being aware of your body and your breath and, and like all the, this like amazing like, nature that is around yeah. us. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very like tactile way to connect with yourself, right? I think that was another really significant component to, at least for me, and I, I know for Alana as well, you know, it's, it's something that you, you interact with your, obviously your body every day, right? And yeah. so much of the time, like you don't even think about the actions that you're doing and it sort of becomes like this monotonous thing, you know, like you're just putting on your face cream, like putting on your deodorant and then you're like brushing out the door because like you have to be somewhere in like 10 minutes time. And like, you know? It really goes to really bringing it back down to taking those moments in time and really, you know, the self care behind it. Yeah. Uh, reducing stress and anxiety, not only by using things from the plants, but also by, by really incorporating as a daily uh, medicinal practice, let's just say, you know, like it's taking your medicine. I'm going to put my creams on my body and I'm going to enjoy the time that I'm doing it. It's like that prescription pad for wellness. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a more, it's like a very personal act, right? Like it's such a, it's, yeah, it's such a personal and like sacred ritual of caring for yourself. And we kind of got so swept away in, in the, like the rush and the hype and you know, and, and of just daily life and consumption and like all of these other like necessaries that aren't really necessary. So for us, a lot of it was also born out of those frustrations too, right? About like seeing other products that, you know, are on offer and then. like this doesn't really actually align and nothing is really providing us with this like holistic space to really care for ourselves. So I'm just going to throw it out. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying normally, you know, the, the common thing to do is just to, oh, go to the store and buy a product and not think about what goes into that product. So, you know, going back to your original question of why skincare, it's, you know, generally we're more conscious these days of what we put it in our bodies, you know, mm -hmm. eating more organic food that isn't contaminated with things that we, that don't like fit with our bodies, but also like this very, very important issue that we want to bring to the forefront is what are you putting on your skin? What kind of chemicals are you putting on your skin? And how can we simplify it and go back to the more like traditional, like ancestral ways of caring for our bodies, which is really like the basis of where our, what our practice or what our business is rooted in yeah. is finding products or creating products that are, are simple and minimalist and just taking those plants on a very, and, and not changing them too much, but just changing them just enough so that they they provide our body with like vitality and mm -hmm. that's a really important part. So like there there's a couple of things. The, the one you talked about, you know, not changing what it is, you know, we're not talking about taking it to a laboratory and like completely changing the chemical makeup of whatever it is, but there are some things that we have to break down to be able to use them in their in their, you know, the, the the desired way. Um, so for example, sometimes leaves, you can't just necessarily take them and put them directly on your skin. No, they have to be broken down with, you know, they, they have to be somehow put into this package in a way. So, you know, the part of, you know, packaging and putting it together, it's not so much about the, the, the chemical breakdown of it. It's by really making sure that it's going to be properly set up for your body. But the other thing that you said that, that I, we were totally in the same, <laughs> in the same line, your skin is the biggest organ of your body. Mm -hmm. You know, we are all taking, we are all trying to spend time taking care of our insides, right? Like you said, taking, we're taking in organic foods. Um, and that's great because that helps our gut. And then in turn, it helps the things that are inside of us. But imagine every single thing that touches our skin, which is something that geeks me out a bit, because everything that touches our skin, it goes into our body. It's completely yeah. absorbed. <laughs> So, if you you know you're putting that you know I hate to throw brands out there but like any of the brands of shampoos that are out there there's like chemical additives that are put in there there's fragrances there's dyes there's 
Mm -hmm. And they're, they're put in such little minimal amounts, but everything in a minimal amount ends up being so profound over time. And there are so many things that we have going on in our like illnesses, mm -hmm. like so many illnesses now that didn't exist 20, 30, 50 years ago. Yeah. And we wonder why. Exactly. Right. So, um, how do you feel that your, your, your line of products helps our everyday client? Mm -hmm. I, I would say that for us, I mean, every product that we create really has a functional purpose. Mm -hmm. like it's sort of coming back to that foundational idea of minimalism and quality over quantity, right? So yeah. it's every, so we bear that in mind whenever we're crafting, designing and brainstorming product ideas or just ingredients, right? So in that sense, I would say that all of our products have an intended purpose and they're made to work well and to work efficiently and potently, right? They, they're, they're made to, to serve you and to bring, to bring together things and help, and help align everything around you, right? And so I think that all of those products, you know, yes, they have an intention and we want to carry that further to our customers too, right? Like we don't want you just to buy a serum, serum for the sake of having a serum because now those are popular, right? Yeah. It's also about like, what is, what is the time that you spend when you put the serum on, you know, like we, we go down and we dig really deep when we're creating these, like, what is the texture of this? Is this a texture that people will enjoy that will allow them to create this ritual? What about the scent? You know, like, is this something that will allow people to find um, something within them, these quiet moments of calm? Is this something that they will be able to take and carry with them and hold with them for the rest of their day? So for us, it, it really like when, I think about it, we really, it's, it's so much more than just creating the products, right? So we really have the experience. Yeah, it's really going back to like this experience of like self-love and self-care and just creating like daily rituals for oneself, right? So. And I think to, to expand on that too, like in addition to this, like uh, encouraging more self-love and self-care is also encouraging the this inspiring people to understand where these products are coming exactly. from too and just before we jumped on the call i was telling helena i was kind of reflecting this morning on like the meaning of beauty and what it means to me and i think what our products what we hope to offer through our products is that connection to nature so when we're in when i'm in nature and helena like also yeah. agreed with me but like when do we feel, when do I feel the most beautiful? It's not when I'm like looking in the mirror and like trying to cover up something that I don't like. It's when I'm out in nature, like walking through the forest and being mm. with the trees and like feeling the wind on my face or jumping in water and just being in that water or feeling the sun on my face. Like, and that's what we want to come through in our products is when you put that, when you apply that serum to your face like we want that we want that that glow from nature to kind of shine through yeah i have no words <laughs> like <laughs> how'd you stop me that was like amazing <laughs> i love how you said that because you know and again going you, you, wow <laughs> i have nowhere to go <laughs> you killed me there <laughs> that was so beautiful because all i was picturing was like walking in the forest like i was back to like you know uh camping you know where you don't have your phones and you don't have a mirror and you don't really care about what you're really looking at on the outside because it's really all about what's happening on the inside mm -hmm. and i feel like your brand is reflecting exactly that it's crazy okay so plants <laughs> plants because you went there you started talking about plants and we talked about sustainability and we talked about going local and so how have you been able to navigate that within your business because yes we're in quebec you know we don't really have the best climate um you know we don't have coconut trees that grow everywhere so like how would you i mean we talked we had a chance to talk a little bit about that but 
I'd like you to explain what, you know, how your process goes into picking the types of materials that, you know, the, the choice of plants that you're going to use in your products and what makes them either sustainable or organic or makes them the top of the quality because, you know, coconut oil for most people is coconut oil and they don't know the difference between one or the other. And so I think that there's a good point there to, to, to make about how we choose things that are going to be local or maybe not local, but you know, the better choice. Um, I mean, this is something we spend a lot of time on and it's yeah. also a process of evolution for Embody mm -hmm. as well. So yes. there's, yeah, it takes a lot of time to research what plants are growing in the area, what medicinal properties they have. Um, but our main goal really is to build relationships with farmers and growers around us. Mm -hmm. And through that, we come to know what's available to us. So for example, we use a lot of sunflower oil. That's the base, um, the, the major base in our serums um, and in our, our recovery balm and in the hand salve. So we, you know, whereas someone would automatically turn to something like olive oil, that's just if you, you look up recipes or if you yeah. certain things, it's olive oil. But mm -hmm. there are some really amazing like organic sunflower farms around Montreal. So we definitely take advantage of that. And mm -hmm. that's why we use the sunflower oil. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to different like, herbs and, and plants, we either grow them ourselves, like we have a little garden here, or we have like family, like my cousin grows mm -hmm. some, some herbs for us as well, yeah. or we're, we know where it's coming from and either it's grown without pesticides or herbicides, or they're certified organic. But we, you know, we'd rather um, use a, a, a product like calendula that's not certified organic, but we know exactly where it's coming from and we know the practices rather than getting calendula that comes from like Egypt that's certified organic. Like the, the, the quality is, is so different even though it has that certification. Yeah. So yeah. we're, it's really crazy actually. So yeah. That's actually a really, really good point that you bring up there that certified organic versus actually buying local. A lot of the times our local stuff is organic. It just doesn't have the actual seal. Yeah. And I think that that's where a lot of people have a hard time. They're like, well, it's local, but it's not organic. And you know, there's a lot of small businesses, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you're able to get your seal of certified organic, but you know, I know that the process to getting a certified organic seal is actually very difficult. It's also very like cost, I, very cost and labor intensive. I know, and this is again where you know my background in agriculture mm. and sustainability um, has really opened up my eyes to that process. I personally have interacted with many, many farmers who, you know, they more or less practice regenerative farming. Yep. And they are completely organic, but they will never be able to have the seal, like the stamp that certifies them of that because, you know, the there are so there's so much red tape associated with that and there was a specific one that I, I can recall and I was there and I, it was a beautiful beautiful farm and the people were absolutely lovely and they were completely organic and very like um, they were doing all of the best practices and like completely um, self like sufficient to, yeah. right? it was incredible and their whole shtick was like well, so it's like a biodynamic farm, right? Where everything on the exactly, yeah. completely regenerated exactly, on that yeah. land. And, and their whole thing was like, well, like we, A, we cannot afford the certification process because it costs X amount of money. But then further that, like we could never do these types of farm tours. No. Like, because you need to so explicitly track exactly like yeah. who's coming in, when, when did they leave, how long were they there for, where were they before that, you know, like there's, it, there's so much, so, so, so much involved with that process that I think if you have the insight, if you are aware, like, and that's why we think building a relationship with our food and our food systems and our growers is so important because oftentimes, and organic doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that nothing is used, right? Like, there are certain herbicides and pesticides that are still allowed to be used by that certification standard, right? Whereas I love that you just said that because yeah. there is so much about that industry that 
people don't know. They see organic. And even if it's a bag of chips that's full of other stuff in it, like that's not actually good. It still has the certified organic seal. And you're just like, this is actually not healthy. And this thing, <laughs> you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like a bag of chips, but you know, I'm still going to pick and choose, but yeah, you're hundred percent right. That organic seal and it costs a lot. And so, you know, for, for small businesses, you know, even those regenerative biodynamic farms, like I've been on a lot of them, they don't use pesticides. They don't use herbicides. They're yeah. crop cycling. They're moving things in places. They're like, you know, they're, they're using the land and the animals as fertilizer that can't be any more organic yeah. than that. Exactly. So that's why for us, it's especially important to really like build those relationships. And for us, it's, it's really at the forefront of our brain to ensure that where we are getting our ingredients from, that we like have a clear understanding of that and that we know exactly what that looks like. I freaking love that. I think it's... Yeah, yeah, that being said too, we, we don't, we use some products that everything isn't a local, like we be yeah. transparent about yeah. that as well. So yeah. for those those soaps that you know where we choose to use coconut oil or olive oil in that you know the coconut oil, like as you said, the coconut yeah. trees are growing rampantly around here. So <laughs> like we we do it and <laughs> we try to the best of our ability. I to choke here. <laughs> Yeah, we try to the best of our ability to to find sources that are organic, certified organic, and fair trade. And we try as best as as best as possible to know where mm -hmm. those ingredients are coming from because it is something we care about. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I love your story. I love everything about it. Um, I. I again, I can't even, the things that we've talked about today are, are so in line with what I believe in. And again, it co comes down to, you know, the overall holistic health of, of a human being, right? Like mm -hmm. it's not just one line. And I, I talk about that often, you know, with, with my podcast, but with my clients as well. And, you know, it's so important that all lines of our, our lives are like, you know, coming in the right direction. And so I feel like, something like your your business you know embody apothecary you know having that the, the great foundation and where you guys stand when it comes to self-care and self-love and taking the time and the moments and that's actually something that i'm gonna continue to to to, to use moving forward because even with it, with my one-on-one -on -one clients you know we don't often take those moments we don't i mean i was just thinking about putting my serum on i'm like was i thinking about where it came from was I thinking about how, like how somebody put their time and their energy into creating this for me and my face and to give me that useful glow that I want? Mm -hmm. Like, no, I wasn't thinking about that. And so I think that going really back down into our, our, our hearts and our roots and finding businesses like yourself and things that can, you know, really, I don't know, just build you up from the inside out and from the outside in yeah. is super important. Um, where can we find your stuff? <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> um, so we have obviously our own website where you can buy directly through there. Yeah. Um, so we have every, that's our probably our most up-to-date um, inventory is there where we do a lot of our new product drops. Yeah. Um, and then we have a few different wholesalers. So there's a few other online platforms that you can also purchase things that are like very, they're Canadian. Uh, one is Canadian focused and the other one is Quebec focused, which is really exciting, continuing cool. that um, local economy. And then we have a few other small local shops that carry a few of our items too. So there is Estilby, which is in Hochelaga. It's a florist, they do beautiful work. Oh, nice. In a florist. I see. I love that connection. You're like talking mm -hmm. about plants and you have it in a florist shop. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we also are going to bring over actually, like we just finalized everything with a nice, a really cute little vintage shop just down the street from us. So mm -hmm. that's really amazing too. And um, I guess before lockdown, we also had things at Nada Yoga. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a slow, slow grow. It's great. That's amazing. So what I'm going to get you guys to do is that once we get off this, I'm going to want you to go and put in the comments, uh, set, put me a link for your Instagram, for your Facebook, for your website, um, because I want to get the word out there because it's super important that we start to really, you know, one 
think about what we're putting on our skin as much as the things that we're putting in our body, but also to really, I, I, I'm going to stop and take moments now. Like I'm going to do my skincare routine and I'm really going to appreciate it because again, that, that might be at two minutes in your day, but that's two minutes of self-care that you didn't have yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know a lot of my clients have a hard time with, with self-care. Um, and so I think it's something that we need to really bring back as something that is normal and natural, and it's not something to be ashamed of, and it is not selfish. Self-care is super important. And if we don't have our glass overflowing, we can't give it. We can't give anything out. Exactly. <laughs> is there anything else that you guys wanted to add today? No? No, no, no I don't. <laughs> This was so good. This was really amazing. I truly appreciate having you guys on here. I'm really glad that uh, we, we, we were put into contact because I think that, you know, again, coaching connections is about not just the coaching aspect of it, but it's really about making connections and helping people to know that their journey is not linear. It's, you know, I, I always talk about my tree in the background, but it's like branches, it's leaves, it's the new growth. It's, it's everything. That's what your health journey is. It is not something that goes this way. And there are so many different people that play a huge part in your health journey um, that we don't even realize. So somebody like you guys who are behind in body, uh, you don't realize it, but everything that you guys are doing for your brand is actually supporting somebody's health and wellness journey. And that's really, really wanted to, what, what I wanted to get clear uh, to my crowd today. So ladies, this was an amazing uh, conversation. I truly appreciate you coming on. Um, and I will be looking forward to seeing those dropped in the comments a little bit later. If any of you have any questions for us, uh, if you have any questions for us, comments, please feel free, post them on the, um, on the, uh, yeah, on the, on the, on the Facebook page. Um, and if you guys, and if, if anybody is missing any of the other episodes, you can go find me also on YouTube where I have all of the past episodes there. So feel free to share. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you. Thank you so much for having Happy me. Happy Friday, everybody. And have a great day. Yeah, let's go get some self-care on. <laughs> <laughs>